Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Garage. Learn it, build it, teach it. Today, we build the base for the swing link. The swing link being a thing that will reverse the direction of my Jeep's power steering box. If you didn't know that, you should probably go watch the previous episodes. This is what we will be building. This is the axle tube, and this is the swing link housing. The thing that we made in episode two. This will mount onto the axle much like a leaf spring perch. We have three saddles here. Then we have two blocks of steel on either side that the U-bolt will go through to hold the swing link to the axle. If my axle wasn't painted, I would simply weld it to the axle, but it's all painted and pretty. So that's not an option. Then we have four plates that will hold the swing link housing to the base, though only two are shown here. And we have the main plate that everything will be welded to. Let's start with the axle saddles. I threw some 3 8 inch plate steel into the mill. I then trim it with an end mill. What? It seemed easier than a bandsaw. I then cut a hole into the plate with a hole saw. If you're thinking this is looking a lot like my overcomplicated leaf spring perches, you would be right. I then finish up the hole with a boring head. This makes the hole the exact size of my axle tube. I then slice the plate in half, making two saddles. I need three, so I'll do this twice, which gets me four. Yeah, I can do math. I then place all three saddles into the mill and trim the top. This is important because I want the swing link as low as possible, so the main plate will be resting on top of the axle tube. Speaking of the main plate, we slot it. Yep, I placed three slots into the bottom of the main plate. This is for the saddles to slip into, not only adding strength, making assembly a little easier, but it also allows the main plate to sit right on the axle tube. Then I weld the saddles onto the base plate. I use a piece of PVC pipe to assist this. I made the PVC pipe the same diameter as my axle tubes. I use it to make sure all the saddles are aligned properly. If my axle wasn't painted, I would simply weld this to the axle tube, but it's painted. And I can't just take the whole thing apart and repaint it, now can I? Well, I guess I could, but I'm not. So I need some way to keep the swingling from swinging around my axle tube. The solution is quite studly. Literally, it's studs. I start out by drilling two holes into the base. With the base on the axle at the correct angle, I drill two holes into the axle tube using the base's holes as guides, which you can't see because there's no video. Sorry. After tapping, I thread in studs using leak lock to not only prevent the studs from backing out, but to seal the threads. This will prevent water from getting into the axle tubes. The studs are simply socket cap bolts. I turn the heads down to a known diameter. And with the holes widened to this known diameter that I can't remember, we have a base that can't rotate around the axle. With the saddles welded and the studs installed, it's time to make these ribs which there are supposed to be four of. These ribs will help hold the swing link housing in place. After cutting the four ribs out of some quarter inch steel, I drill holes in them with a hole saw. I'm using a three, four, five block clamped to my mill's table as a backstop. This will make it go much faster. Like the saddles, I bore the exact hole size with the use of a boring head. And like the saddles, I trim the bottom of the ribs. I am using the completed housing to make sure that all of the ribs are properly lined up. And yup, you guessed it. Like the saddles, I slot the base for the ribs to slip into. Unlike the saddles, I accidentally made two slots in the wrong direction. Oops. I then weld the ribs, housing, and base all together. I use a piece of scrap sheet metal to make sure that no welding sparks make it into the housing to mess up all of my previous work. I fix that little extra slot mistake by jamming in these filler pieces. Then I weld in the filler pieces to both the base and the housing, as if it were planned that way. I, I mean it was. Yeah, it, it was totally my plan. 
totally planned out that way. I also add the steel blocks. Unfortunately, this is the only thing I have to show them. A still frame of my GoPro. Wait, stand back. I'm going to try something that will work. I know this because I saw it in a movie once. Zoom. Enhance. I said enhance. Rats. That didn't work. They're just steel blocks welded into each corner of the sway link base. Later on, I will mill slots into them for my U-bolts to slip into. But before that, how do we make this look better? Hmm. Aha! What if we cut the sides like this at an angle? How about that? Now that right there is fancy. Not only fancy, but it saves weight. Yeah, like that's a concern. Believe it or not, the best way I could think of doing this was on the mill. I can rotate my mill head so that it is at an angle. And that's just what I did. Using the long 5 8 inch end mill that I got to mill the U-bolt slots, I slowly cut the sides off. Until the end mill breaks, that is. Rats. That end mill was expensive too. If you want to see my synopsis on why I think the end mill broke, go watch my video, Death of an End Mill. With a new end mill, I finished the cut, making sure to cut the ends in climb milling rather than standard. If you want to know what that is and why, watch my video, Death of an End Mill. Or just Google it, either or. Since the mill only took care of the angled cut, I finished the flat bottom cut with a bandsaw using the U-bolt blocks as a guide. Oh, here we go. This is a better picture of the U-bolt blocks. What we need to do next is mill the slots for this U-bolt. This U-bolt will hold the swing link to the axle tube. Sounds easy enough. I first pre-drill with a half inch drill bit. This will help out the end mill since there is less material to remove. And the end mill can't plunge cut. Cheap thing. Now I plunge the end mill and Wait, did I just break another end mill? Dang it. Now how did that happen? You know what? I don't even care. I'm tired of messing around with this. Forget the bank account. It's time to bring in the big guns. Alright, here we go. I got an end mill kit that includes a 5 8 inch end mill. Then I got two, yes count them, two 5 8 inch roughing end mills. Probably should have gone with the roughing end mills to begin with, but it's too late for that. We must go on. Alright, let's do this. I drill with a 5 8 inch drill bit instead of the puny, inadequate half inch drill bit. As if unleashing the Hulk himself, I plunge the roughing end mill into the snide steel. It just chewed that steel, spit it out, and asked for more. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, let's continue. I clean up the top of the U-bolt blocks by facing them with a fly cutter. I do the same to the top. I actually square off the top of the housing a little. This will aid with the grease zerk fittings. And now it's time to apply the skin. This will not only keep water and dirt out, but make it look nice. I first bake the swilling in my powder coating oven at around 450 degrees Fahrenheit for a few hours. This not only bakes off any oil, but it blues the steel. This will make the steel a little more resistant to rusting. A little. I'm not too confident over the whole thing, but it seemed like a good idea. I then weld quarter inch plate over the swing link, video of which is missing. But you see someone weld once, you've seen them weld a hundred times. Uh oh, this may be a problem. There's not a lot of room here for my U-bolt, nut, and washer. To remedy this, I place the swing link in the mill and cut a shoulder to make room for the nut and washer. Let's just hope I don't blow through and make an opening. Yeah, it worked, and we didn't blow through. The bearings obviously need grease. This grease will be delivered to the bearings via grease zerk fittings. To protect the fittings from flying debris, I'm going to countersink them. I first mill a hole, but only deep enough to go through the quarter inch skin. I then undo my hole by filling it in with a weld. I then mill out a smaller hole within the weld I had just made. 
This is to keep out moisture. If I had simply milled a smaller hole, there would be a gap between the skin and the soil link housing. Welding in the hole forms a solid chunk of steel that I can mill into. This keeps moisture out from underneath the swing link skin, which will help reduce rusting issues down the road. And then drill and tap the hole so that the gray cirque fittings will screw into. And the swing link base is done. Next, we need to make the arm, then the swing link will be ready for paint and assembly. Which is what the next episode will be about, making the swing link arm. Also, let's be honest here, I am not a regular on releasing videos. So why don't you hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button. That tells YouTube to notify you every time I release a video, which isn't that often, so you won't be annoyed.